how can you look back on a crutch like that? You know, when you can train and work out. Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to episode 14 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm also the founder of Whistlekick, makers of the best sparring gear on earth, as well as apparel and accessories for traditional martial artists. If you're new to the show, you can learn more about our products at whistlekick.com, and you can learn more about the podcast, including all of our past episodes, show notes for this one, and a whole lot more over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. While you're there, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter full of information about us, discounts, and useful martial arts content. It's an honor to bring you this episode with Bill Superfoot Wallace. There are a few in the martial arts that don't know of his amazing career, but after listening to this, you'll know all about him. Mr. Wallace speaks candidly about his entry to martial arts, his catastrophic injury, and even about the loss of some very good friends. Despite the seriousness of some of the topics, his trademark sense of humor is well on display. So, without any further delay, Bill Wallace, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thank you very much, sir. I'm looking forward to it. I haven't done this for a long time, so I'm looking forward to working with you, Jeremy. Thank you. Cool. Well, thank you for being here. It's quite the honor. So everybody knows who you are. They they know a lot about a lot about your history. But why don't you tell us why you got started in the martial arts? Well, I was a wrestler in high school and college, and when I joined the service. Uh, when I joined the service, I went over to the to the main gym where I got to, to my permanent station to see if they had a uh, a wrestling team or anything like that. And I said, "Well, I don't know what it is, but there's a bunch of guys in white suits rolling around in the and on the on the mats in the back." So I walked in the back, and he was, they were playing judo, and that's how I got started playing judo because they, did, they didn't have a wrestling team, but they had a judo team, and wrestling was very very similar to judo. So that's how what I got was started. It, what was it that you? liked about judo did you like it more than wrestling uh no no it wasn't wasn't uh, it wasn't as much fun because the 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 rules were different you could do this you can't do that you can't do this you can't, when you throw people you can't grab the legs you can't and i went what the heck's this you know but then i i, I learned to like it quite a bit but wrestling is still my first love so but it was similar you know i, I did like the throws i like some of the takedowns i like the the hold downs i like the chokes i like the arm bars and i really enjoyed the throws and of course, it was an, an injury in judo that took that you out of there and yep. turned you into a kicker. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Sure is. I fell on my. I was trying to. I tried to do a throw called a uchigari, which is a inner reaping throw. You try to trip the leg, and a guy just collapsed and fell right on my on my knee and tore the medial collateral ligament. Now, were you into stretching and kinesiology at all at that point, or was it not the injury? Not at all. No, that was when I was in the service. I went to college after the after the uh, after the service. So I, I had no idea about it. So I, the guy says, your knee's all screwed up. We want to operate. And I said, what happens if you operate? And he says, well, it might be okay. It might not be. I said, what happens if you don't operate? He said, well, it might be okay. It might not be. I said, you're not going to operate. <laughs> so you didn't have the surgery? No, sir. This was, oh, wow. this was back in 1966. There was no such thing as arthroscopic surgery. Back then, it was called exploratory. So they would have had you all torn up? They would have, yeah. That would have, that would have, my career would have been done. I'd have, I'd have been a, I'd been a, an, a, a, a spectator. So there are a lot of stories that people have heard you tell, and, and you've certainly had a chance to meet and compete and train with a lot of the greats. But if you could pick just one story that you could tell us, I'd, I'd like you to share one. Your best martial arts story. Well, I guess the best martial arts story in, in competition aspect of it, other than other than you know training with my best friend Joe Lewis and and several other people, is is I was fighting I was fighting a guy named Skipper Mullins in uh, Dallas, Texas, nineteen nineteen uh, nineteen seventy two, I think it was, and uh, that he was from Dallas, Texas. The tournament was at the U.S. Championships in Dallas, Texas. He was already national champion, world champion, lightweight, and all this stuff. And a very, very good kicker, except he used the right leg. I use my left, he uses his right. And it was supposed to be between Skipper and myself, who was the best kicker. So, And he won the lightweight division, I won the heavyweight division. If you can imagine me being a heavyweight. But anyway, <laughs> I won the heavyweight division. And uh, we were out there for the grand championship match. And uh, the head referee is a guy named Ed Daniels. Guy 6'8", about 320 pounds. Chuck Norris was in one corner. Uh, Mike Stone was in the other corner. Uh, a guy named Pat Burleson was in one corner, and a guy named Jim Harrison was in the other corner. These are these are the absolute greats of uh, of yeah. point tournaments 
back in the 60s. And, uh, but they were all really, really good friends of Skipper Mullins at the time. And uh, so he called us to the center. You know, uh, Ed Daniels calls to the center. He says, uh, Bill, look around. And I look around. He says, I said, yes, sir. And he says, uh, you see who the referees are, right? I said, yes, sir. And he says, you know what you're going to have to do to get a point, don't you? I said, huh? He says, you're going to have to nail him. I said, what? <laughs> the fact that it was funny, you know, I could touch you and think, hey, I could have killed him. But now you say, now you got to. I said, oh, no. He said, really? He says, oh, yeah. And then Skipper says, yep, Bill, if, to get the point, you're going to have to nail me. And I went, oh, great. So he bowed in. You know, he came across the floor, rocked back and tried to sweep me. And I, I hit him in the chest with a hook kick and dropped him. And, uh, and uh, you know, and no flags. And he's, he's still on the ground. He's on the ground. He stood up and he says, good shot, Bill. I says, I didn't get the point. He says, what? And uh, Chuck Norris says, hit him in the arm. My stone, yeah, yeah, hit him in the arm. I didn't drop him. He hit him in the arm. And he opened up his gi top and there's a big old red heel print right on his solar plexus. <laughs> and I said, no matter what happens after that, Skipper, you and I are going to be the best friends in the whole world. And uh, I went on and, and you know, I dropped him with a sidekick, and then I, I, and then I think I dropped him with a reverse punch after that. But, but uh, you know, we had we had a lap, we had a just a, an absolute ball. That was that was probably the, the best time I ever had in point tournaments when when we did that fight. Wow, that's... that was in 1972, I think it was. That's a cool story. Well, thank you. Even your beginning of your martial arts career was, you know, based around something that, you know, wasn't terribly positive uh, with the injury with your knee. But I'd like you to think about what your life might have been like without martial arts and then, of course, where you are. And how has the martial arts changed you or made you a better person? Well, my father always wanted to be a school teacher. Since day one, my father wanted me to be a school teacher because he was a school teacher. So, and that's the reason I went to college to be a school teacher. But then, but then I started doing the martial arts and stuff like this. So, uh, everything, you know, just kind of ran in its place. And, you know, I didn't want to teach school. I, I didn't mind, you know, working out and teaching karate and stuff like that, but I never wanted to teach school. And, uh, so, you know, and that was, that was what was going to happen. I was going to, so, and that's, uh, what happened. So, and then uh, I started doing, uh, karate. And he says, when are you going to quit doing that stuff and get a good job? And I said, Dad, I like doing this. He says, well, you got to get a good job teaching school. And then when I won the world championship in 1974, he says, all I did after that was introduce me as, he's a world champion karate fighter. <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of made, and, uh, you know, I mean, ironically enough, it's, it, sound, it sounds funny, but I've never had a job. You know, this, this has always been my job, doing karate, teaching karate, uh, competing, and uh, it's, it's always just been an absolute blast, you know. I mean, here, I'm one of the few lucky people in the world that I get a chance to get paid to work out and I get paid to have some fun and work out and get paid to do what I like to do. That's And and you do it well and you've been so inspiring to so many people. So on, oh, on well, behalf of others and, and myself, thank you for for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. Well, hey, all... I've had a blast. I've had a blast. <laughs> so those are all high points, but I'd like you to think about something on the other end of the spectrum, a low point maybe in your life that your martial arts training and experience and attitude was able to help you move through or overcome? Well, I mean, the low point, of course, you know, very few of us that that are competitors that have trained a lot and are hardcore karate people have stayed married to our original wife. (laughs) I mean, it's just because we're gone all the time, you know, and, and no matter what happened, our wives are second. Martial arts has always been first for me. And every everybody else, everything else has been down on the list. So it's kind of difficult to uh, to uh, you know to say, well, gee, you know, that's a, that's a really high point. Well, it's not. It sucks as a matter of fact. Yeah. But uh, but the other low, low, you know, the other points that helped me get through everything was, you know, you you know, I've had two really really good friends of mine that have died uh, because of drugs. You know, a guy named Elvis Presley and a guy named John Belushi. And, uh, you know, and, and they both trained with me. They both worked out with me. And, uh, it's just, it's just, you know, you kind of say, Hey, you know, how can you, how can you look back on a crutch like that to to have, you know, when you can train and work out and and beat the shit out of somebody and go out and have fun afterwards, go out to have a beer, go out and have a Coke, go out and have a hamburger with each other without getting mad at each other. But then, but then certain people, 
need that added crutch, you might say. But that, that, that to me, is a low point because you, you, you mm. do your damnedest to try to help somebody, and uh, either they, they, they can't stop it themselves or they, they're weak enough that they have their friends tell them what to do. That was, that was John's problem. John uh, had too many friends that, uh, that did drugs, and, uh, you know, you can only say no so often before say, okay, I'll try it. Those are low points for sure, and you know there are a lot of people that have seen their friends go down that path and, yeah, yeah. and uh, been a little bit of time, but I'm sure the pain is still there for you. So I, I appreciate you being so open and sharing that with us. Now, you've had a chance to train with, I mean, everybody, anybody and everybody that you wanted to, and that's, that's pretty cool and something that most of us can't say. But who, if you had to pick somebody that was most influential throughout your martial arts career, who would that be? Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis, simply because the first time, because I remember I had a bad knee. I have a bad knee, my right leg, so I can't push off with it. And what happens is I, I, I you know, I, I started this like everybody else did in karate. You, you, you take this karate stance and you try to, but, but I couldn't push off with it because my knee was bad. And then I saw Joe Lewis compete. He was sideways. He turned totally, perfectly sideways and worked that back fist and a side kick. And my first technique that I learned in karate was a sidekick, simply because I couldn't, you know, I was in a cast at the time, so I couldn't, mm. I couldn't move around. So the instructor, Azar Shimabuku, says to me, he says, he says, oh, you do a sidekick, I show you a sidekick, and you do a sidekick. So he showed it to me, and you know, I'm standing, I'm just standing in, in the dojo, in his clothes, and I must have thrown thirty-five thousand sidekicks, you know, not moving, just throwing them, just to practice the knee coming up and the sidekick coming out to the side, and that that was. You know, and that, then I met Joe, which was his number one weapon, the sidekick. And then, uh, you know, I'd, I'd again working out with Chuck, Chuck Norris, and, you know, people like that. And probably, probably the, one of the, uh, another huge influence was a guy named Glenn Keeney. Because when I went back to Ball State in Muncie, Indiana, I was, you know, I still worked out in karate, but I didn't know any karate schools around. Then I met a guy named Glenn Keeney work at, at a workout, and we became friends. He was in Anderson, Indiana. I was in Muncie, which is about 18 miles away. And two or three times a week, I would drive over to his school and train at his school. We would spar. We would work out, beat the crap out of each other, and have a, have an absolute blast. We did this for, like, six years. And uh, he went on trips together, went on tournaments together. He, he talked me to go to tournaments with him, so we'd go to tournaments and uh, had a blast. Had an absolute blast. Competition, obviously, has been a, a huge part of your life, maybe a bigger chunk of your martial arts career than, than uh, anyone else. I, I would say 99% of it. <laughs> yeah. What was it about competition that kept you coming back? What did you love about it so much? It was fun. It was fun. You can actually go out there in a spar scene, and nobody wants to get hit in the face. Nobody wants to get hurt. But the, uh, in the competition aspect, the point tournaments is you can actually go out there and compete and spar. Even even on the side, you can spar with somebody and and trust each other and not get hurt. Sure, there's accidents that happen once in a while. There's some guys that are bullies, but for the most part, you got to spar. You can spar for an hour and a half, two hours, and not have any bruises at all. And that was the fun part of it. The, the, the fun part of competition was not the winning. It was just, just to spar around, having a blast, having an absolute absolute blast. I hate to lose, by the way, but uh, you know if you're. The, the, the spar was just, it was just fun. If you look at anybody, it was just fun. We never thought, you know, I mean, Chuck Norris, his whole thing with sparring was when he went to competition, he says it wasn't to win, it wasn't to this, it was to get karate students so we could have a nice, successful school. I'd never heard that before. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, what, what a riot. Was there anybody that you didn't get to train with that you would have liked to? Uh, I, I, I met Bruce Lee back in 1967. I would have liked to train with Bruce. What do you think you would have taken from that time with him? I have no idea. I have okay. no idea. I, I imagine some of the movements, and some of the you know techniques involved, and so forth and so on, maybe. But uh, you know, because but he he used a lot of front hand and front leg techniques, like I do. So you know, maybe maybe we would have melded somehow an idea. Because at that time in '72, well, I met him in '67, but in '72 when he just before he died. I was I was national champion at the time, and he had uh, he had seen me fight evidently, but you know I never did get to play with him because at that time I was in Indiana, and he was in California. That would have been cool. You may have. I would like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You could. Uh, I was thinking maybe, you know, some of your your footwork because at the time it was so unique. Maybe you had some influence on Jeet Kune Do in there. Maybe, maybe. 
that, that we, we don't even know about. Yeah, maybe. Do you have a favorite martial arts actor? Um, yeah, Chuck Norris. Yeah, film Why? because I did a film. I did a film with him uh, called uh, Force of One, and the most important part, he, he's one of those few guys that can do what he says. You know, he was uh, he was a, uh, uh, a, a karate person first, an actor second, but he became you know a decent actor and. Uh, Genuinely, genuinely, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. A great, great, great person. So you can't, you can't do anything bad about that. One of my, one of my best friends in the whole world. Oh, really? You guys are still, yeah. still close. Oh, yeah, we, we still talk. Oh, that's great. It's, yeah. you know, I think for for those of us that grew up watching you guys, it's we want to think that you're all friends, but to yeah. hear that, with, well, we, we all, yeah, we all get along. We have something in common. It's one of those few times that we have something in common. What's your favorite martial arts movie? Uh, uh, four for one. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. I, you know, I, I like them all. You know, it's got some common sense into it, some some good fight scenes, and some good good movies. I like them all. I like to watch them. How about books? Any any martial arts related books? I wrote three of them. I like I like all three of them. I have three books: uh, Dynamic Stretching and Kicking, The Ultimate Kick, and uh, Karate Basic Concepts and Skills. Those okay. are my three books. <laughs> So. Well, we'll definitely have those linked in the show notes uh, okay. on, on our website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. So you're still out there. You're still training and teaching, and, and I think that's awesome. What keeps you going? Are there goals that you're striving for here? I'm always, well, I'm trying to keep. I'm going to try and keep myself in good shape. Yeah. Trying to keep my flexibility. Trying to keep things. And it's fun kicking people in the head. I really <laughs> enjoy kicking people in the head. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's. <laughs> <laughs> How fun is that? Yeah. I've right. had a chance to watch you kill people. In that. Yeah, that's right. And we shall do it pretty soon. In a couple that's months, right. we will do it. Yep. Um, this might be a good time to mention to folks Sunday, August 16th. Yep, August 16th. We will be there. We will be up in New Hampshire, Vermont, excuse me. Vermont. Yep. Vermont. We'll, we'll have Mr. Wallace here. Having a blast. Vermont. Yep. And for, for one of his, his patented Superfoot seminars. And what, what happens at, at those seminars for, for yep. people that haven't attended before? A little bit of flexibility, explaining exactly how flexibility actions, why flexibility happens. Uh, the kicking techniques with the front leg that I use, the side kick, the roundhouse kick, and the hook kick, different type, different ways of using those kicks, the ways of getting close enough to your opponent to throw those kicks, uh, the speed involved in the kick, the, the uh, deception in, you know, involved in the kicking techniques, then some of the boxing techniques that are used with the, with the kicking techniques. I put it all together at the end. It's fun. It is a ball. It's a ball. I'm a blast. I do it. I've done it now for, for, done seminars now for forty some years, and I still have a blast doing them. And it comes through. Uh, when I was fortunate enough to meet you and, and sit in on your seminar in Connecticut, uh, it was clear that you, you were probably the one having the most fun. Oh yeah. In the whole, oh, I always have the most fun. It, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't the students, and uh, that says a lot for your passion to the arts and, and to teaching. Oh, well, thank you. So, just one more bit. Do you do you have any parting advice for people listening? Just have an absolute blast. Those people that are in the martial arts, uh, there's different systems, there's different ways of doing something, there's different ways of kicking, different ways of touching, different different philosophies, different ideas. And the most important thing is have a blast. Have an absolute ball because it, it's something that you can do absolutely forever, your entire life, and it, it's, it's just fun. So do it. Very well said. Well, I, I thank you for your time. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, and it's, it's great to be and, and, the, uh, and the, the booties felt good this, this weekend. I wore the booties and they felt great. Oh, well, cool. Um, yeah, you you okay with me leaving that part in? Sure, sure. Leave the part in. Oh, of course. Okay, all right. Well, uh, folks, uh, Mr. Wallace is talking about his whistle kick sparring boots that I gave him when I met him and he put them on and I got to watch him kick people in the head. Yes, yes. Wearing them and and uh, sounds like maybe some people took a couple shots while you were wearing them this past weekend. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> well, cool. Um, this has been an honor having you on, and and of course we'll talk more as we get closer to the seminar. But uh, thanks, everybody thanks better be on. there. You tell everybody they better be there. Or I will. I will hunt. I will hunt them down and smack them in the head. <laughs> uh, you just did. I don't need to tell them. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. And Thank I'll talk you, to you sir. Soon. I'll talk to you. Thanks, Jeremy. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Thank you to Mr. Wallace for taking the time out of his day to do this interview. 
If you like this episode, please subscribe to the show so you never miss out in the future. If you could help us out by leaving a five-star review wherever you download your podcasts, it would really help out. Those reviews help new listeners find the show. You can check out the show notes with links to everything we talked about today, the books, the movies, and more, over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're there, if you want to be a guest on the show, or you know someone that would be a great interview, please fill out the guest form. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can keep up on all things Whistlekick. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all with the username Whistlekick. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about the great products we make at Whistlekick, please check us out at, you guessed it, whistlekick.com. Train hard, smile, and have a great day.